Welcome, 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 everyone. My name is Kendrick. You have tuned in to the Crockett Way, and I am back with another segment of In the Word. In today's segment of In the Word, we are going to be discussing sin. The Bible says, the rages of sin is death. If we want to spend eternity with our Lord and Savior, once this life is over, we must be saved from sin. But before we get into the lesson, let's say a quick prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O God. Thank you simply because of who you are, Lord Jesus. But Lord, you are so wonderful, Lord Jesus. You are so merciful and so kind, so great, and Lord, you are so awesome, O oh God. We lift you up on high, my God, for you are the great I am, my God. You are my provider, my God. You are our way maker, my God. Lord, you are our everything, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just lift you up, O oh God. We praise your holy name, O oh God, for you are mighty, O oh God. You are worthy to be praised, O oh God. Lord, if I had 10,000 tongues, my God, it's still would not be enough to say thank you, God. Thank you for all that you've done, my God. All that you are doing and everything you are about to do, my God. Now, Lord, I ask that you bless this word, O oh God. Touch and anoint my lips, O oh God. Every word that comes out of my mouth, O oh God, let it come directly from you, O oh God. Lord, I don't want to say anything, O oh God, that's contrary to your word, my God. So, Lord, use me, O oh God. Speak through me, Lord Jesus, so that somebody might be blessed, O oh God. Somebody might be saved, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. And Lord, we forever give you all the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Amen, Father. Now, our lesson scriptures that we will be reading from today is Romans chapter 6, verses 1, verses 2, and then we're going to skip down to verses 12 through 18, and then verses 22 and 23. Again, that is Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, verses 12 through 18, and verses 22 and 23. And it reads, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. And those that are alive, from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. But now, being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, in the end everlasting life, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, and our subject, again, we're talking about sin. So I believe it's important that we establish what is sin. And the definition um, from the dictionary reads, An immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. So anything that transgressed the word of God Anything that comes against the word of God is considered to be a sin. So in order for me to be aware of sin, I must do what? I must read and study his word. But being educated and aware of sin uh, does not save you from sin, right? In order to actually be saved from sin, we must be born again. I want to start off by saying that we are obviously living in perilous times. 
We are dealing with a pandemic like we have never seen before centered around the coronavirus. And I don't want to sound insensitive when I say this, but no matter how deadly or great the, the tragedy of the coronavirus has been, there is no disease or virus that is greater or more deadly than that of sin. I said in the opening, the rages of sin is death. So that means even if you are physically alive, walking and talking, if you are a sinner, you are still dead. That means that you are the walking dead. Yes, yes, I know. This is not a popular topic. Nobody wants to talk about sin anymore. Nobody wants to talk about hell anymore. But the Bible is right. If every time you hear the word of God and you feel comfortable, that is a problem. Because the Bible says the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. So that means that the word of God ought to pierce you. You ought to feel some discomfort. Now, I've never been stabbed by a two-edged sword, but I cannot imagine that that is a pleasant feeling. So when you hear the word of God, you should not feel pleasant feelings every single time you hear the word of God. Now, I personally was raised in a church where sin and the hell was talked about on the regular by my pastor. It was a permanent staple in his messages. And I even remember those awkward, uncomfortable moments when he would have us raise our hands. If we believed that if we died right now, in heaven would we lift up our eyes. If we believed that if we died right now, would heaven be our home? Back then, I could not raise my hands. But I believe because of those uncomfortable moments is the reason that I am saved today. Now I know that there are some that don't even believe that hell is real. But hell is as real as you're listening to me right now. And the Bible says that hell enlarges itself every day. So contrary to what funeral services may indicate, everybody is not going to heaven. Everybody is not RIP resting in peace. But by the grace of God, those of us that still have breath in our bodies, we still have the opportunity to get it right. We still have the opportunity to spend eternity with our Father in heaven if we are saved from our 50 dirty sins. And that is the sheer purpose of his death. Jesus died on the cross for the remission of our sins so that I might have the opportunity for you to have the opportunity to be saved from our sins so that we can spend eternity with him. He did not die for, how, for us to have a big house. He did not die for us to have designer clothes or driving fancy cars. So prosperity was not the reason. And I am not saying that there is anything wrong with pros prosperity because it is not. But what you need to understand about prosperity is that it is given freely. God gives it freely. The Bible says that he reigns on the just and the unjust. But what he does not give freely is admission into heaven. Heaven is, is reserved specifically for the righteous, for the true born again believers, those who have truly accepted him as Lord and Savior. So the value of prosperity in comparison to our soul and what we spend eternity is uncomparable because in that sense, prosperity is nothing. Now we're about to get into our lesson, but food for thought before we get into our lesson. The Bible says it is easier for a camel to, to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And as I read that scripture, a thought came to my mind. And most of us would love to be in the top 1% of wealthiest people in the world that we hear so often about. And I thought to myself, what if heaven was the same way? What if only 1% actually made it in? Wouldn't you want to be in the number? Think about it. Wouldn't you want to be in that number? It is also important to understand that one cannot or should not call themselves saved and yet be a sinner. Now, I know that there are some churches out there or people out there who believe that once saved, always saved. But the devil is a liar. You cannot serve sin and serve God at the same time. That is why um, Paul said in verse number two, he says, how can you be dead to sin, but live therein? And here lies the definition of a sinner. A sinner is one who lives in sin. That means that you 
practice sin. Sin is a part of your regular behavior. Now, there are some scriptures in the Bible that are commonly used by, by sinners to justify or excuse their sin. And I want to bring a couple of those to your attention because I believe that it is the trick of the enemy to get us to focus in on one or two scriptures and make it the entire Bible. And it does not work that way. Now, one of these scriptures is, for you are saved for by grace you have been saved through faith. Yes, we are saved by grace, but once we become saved, once we have fully given our life to Christ, sin ought to come to a halt. And that's why Paul says, shall you continue in sin that grace may abound, God forbid. In other words, God rejects sin and you cannot fool God. Okay, you may can fool man, but you cannot fool God. See, God knows our heart. He knows our intent. And we're going to speak a little bit more about the heart because that is the key to all of this. Another scripture that is commonly used is, for all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And yes, that is so true, you all. Uh, nobody is perfect. I don't want you to be confused. I am not saying that by being saved, that makes you perfect. That does not mean that you will never, ever sin again. Okay? But what I want you to understand is that these scriptures, or any scripture for that matter, does not give you the license to practice sin. And to those of you who are saved, who have truly been born again, I do not care how long you have been saved. I do not care how much Holy Ghost power you have on the inside. It is important that you have a spirit of daily repentance. It is important that you have a spirit of daily repentance. Even if you don't feel like you did anything wrong throughout the day, it is important that you still repent on the daily because our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And we want to make sure that we get this thing right with him because we only have one chance and we want to spend eternity with our father in heaven. And on that note, I must point out that um, having a title or label attached to your name does not guarantee you a spot into heaven. It does not matter whether you are a bishop, elder, pastor, missionary, mother. Um, it does not matter because we are not saved by a title. So that's why um, those of us who don't have a title ought not get so caught up in titles. Jesus says in Matthew 7 verses 21 through 23. Um, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, in other words, what you do on the outside does not matter. This is an inside job. If your inside isn't right, you will not spend eternity with our Father and it does not matter what your title is or not. And that's why Paul said in our context scriptures, um, Romans chapter six, verses 17 and 18, he says, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the what? The heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. That's why I can't understand those who believe that we are saved through baptism. Baptism is only um, an outward presentation, a symbolic presentation of a transformation that has taken place on the inside. So please understand, that uh, water itself cannot save you. Being dipped in the water and saying in the name of Jesus does not make you safe. It, what matters is the inside. Was there a transformation on the inside? Brothers and sisters, there is nothing in this world that is more important than our soul. There is nothing in this world that is more important than our soul. I cannot stress this enough. The beautiful thing about our God is he gives us choice. He does not make us do anything. And sin is a choice. For sin does not have dominion over us. And the only way that we can be free from sin is to be born again. That means that a transformation has to take place. 
that means that there must be a renewing of the mind. And for the mind to be renewed, that means that the heart has to change a heart transplant. Now, I'm not a medical professional, but if a heart isn't right, if a heart is defective, that means that there must be a heart transplant. My God, thank you, Jesus. Some of you listening to me even right now have defective hearts. Your heart isn't right. And God is pleading with you to get it right. He is pleading with you to make a change. I urge you not to ignore the request of God because tomorrow is not promised to you. People are dying at rapid rates today. People are leaving this world. So you cannot or you should not put off what you can do today for tomorrow. I remember growing up, my pastor would always say, don't play Russian roulette with your soul. And I am here to say the same thing to you. Do not play Russian roulette with your soul. It is too important. Give your life to Christ. I promise you, it will be the best decision you have ever made in your life. And you do not have to be in a church at the altar to, to give your life to Christ. I personally gave my life to Christ right in the, in the shower of my home. You can make your couch your altar. See, because this is an inside job, you don't have to be at a certain place to make a change. And if you sincerely cry out to him, say, Lord, save me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I want to make you my, my Lord and Savior. Lord, he will hear your cries if you do it sincerely. And if you sincerely ask him to forgive you for your sins, right now, even right now, you can be saved. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for all of those that are listening right now, God. Those, Lord Jesus, who are pleading right now on the inside, trying to make a decision, oh God, rather to serve you or not to serve you. Lord, I ask, oh God, that you touch those individuals. Lay your hands on them right now, my God. Save the souls, God. My God, help them to surrender all to you, God. Help them to know that it is the best thing that they could ever do, my God, is give themselves to you, give their lives to you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we forever give you all the praise, all of the glory and all of the honor. We magnify you and we glorify your name, Jesus. In your holy, precious name, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, Father. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to another segment of In the Word. I trust and pray that you are blessed by the word, that you got something out of the word. Um, if you haven't already, please smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel here at The Crockett Way. We would love to have you as a subscriber. Um, and until next time, God bless you and be safe.